Oh, hi there. My name's Maria and I'm just going to talk through this um, a presentation of, of slides here. This is from the portfolio students, uh, the current students 2020 to 2021. It's a boutique uh, module and um, what you're looking at just there now is a um, piece of fabric actually. Uh, it's cotton, it's cotton calico and it is the white um, lineation that's there is from hot wax. It's fluid, it's hot wax and then they are Procyon dyes there and you can see they're, they're blended. They're actually two colours but they give the impression of other colours in it. This is another student piece here. It's a very nice simple piece. I like the frayed edges on this. And if you look at the, you know, drawing part of that, again, that's done with the hot wax fluid method. And it's done actually by heating and um, by using an implement called a uh, jaunting or a canting, it's more commonly known as. And it's a very ancient um, uh, type of instrument to use. And it's a wooden handle and then it has a copper kind of a bell pot. And that's what you dip into the hot wax and then the copper keeps it warm. And of course, the wood is a very poor conductor of heat. So the wood then protects your fingers and your hands when you're working. This again is very similar to the first one. Okay, this one here is actually paper. So this would be contemporary batik. So the student was using the sgraffito technique and you can see that the student has scrape effects on that, but you can see that there's inks developed on top of that. So in a layering process. <clears throat> this one is one of my favorites again from our student uh, from uh, portfolio this year. And uh, this student, worked on about six to eight layers if I look at it. And if you look at this very closely, apart from it being very pleasing to look at, if you look at the, the lemon yellow, which is in the very top plane of that, you can see, and then it, it goes into, it blends into a kind of a green, a kind of an acid green up at the top left. And you can see that that's the very top layer. And then if you look under, you can see these other like linear scrape lines, okay? And you can see them going, um, through it. But if you look, you can see that the yellow is <coughs> overlaid on that. That is comp And if you look at the staining, if it looks like staining and the layers and the buildup, this was a very complicated piece to do. Okay, this was done with dipping and dyeing. This is another student's work here, which is a giant mushroom because it's part of her theme for NCAD. And again, that, that's on um, uh, that's on aquarelle watercolor paper, and that um, encompasses the techniques of salt resist, procyon dyes, hot wax, and I mean there there is about four colors. Okay, it's it's a very nice piece by the same student, and this is a giant shell. Okay, I like this a lot. It's predominantly harmonious colors. Okay, with the dark. Um, it's some dark tones as well in it, but really it's a predominantly um, um, hot coloured piece. Okay, it's a very nice detail here. What is very nice in this as well is that the student has the um, differentiation in lines actually in the linear qualities there, the curved linear qualities of the line are, they're nice and varied. So that shows great control. You can see those fine lines in boutique. Normally when people are starting off with boutique techniques, they find it very hard to control. You have to work, uh, with the canting in one in, in fluid sweeping mo uh, movements or else it spills all over. You can imagine it's a hot fluid and then to, 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 to control that and to control the drops and the drips. So that's quite accomplished. Oh, this one is a fun piece. Okay, so this would have been one of the students first test piece, pieces. Again, now this is on, on paper. You can see it's a very simple sort of childlike flower motif shapes there. Um, but what's fun about this is that the student was actually testing the dye properties um, and how the dyes interact and fuse with each other. And you can see a little bit of salt resist technique, which is on the top left there. Again, this is something I put together, which is just a little sample collection of papers and um, 
fabrics, little little swatches. And if you look at the background plane of that, that's actually, the, and we have a joke in, when we're working with batik in the studio, our joke is that if you stand still yourself, you could become a batik. Everything nearly becomes a batik, nothing is wasted. So those background sheets that you can see in the largest area at the back, they would have been used where there was, um, call them the little receptacle sheets, the little protective sheets, but they end up becoming works in themselves because everything gets used. Now we're really uh, looking at something exciting here. So this student here did um, this piece, as you can see, it's watercolour paper on the top, then it's um, fine newsprint, you know, newsprint on the bottom. Um, we call it newsprint because it's the paper that newspapers are printed on, even though there isn't any print on it, but that's why it's always called newsprint. Beautiful greens and her beautiful purples, and they are complementary colours and they're stunning. The top fibres um, are plaited and dyed with the same dyes that she was working on. And it's, it's really beautiful control there. You can see in the top one, she's got the fine lines and then she's got the fatter lines and then on the bottom it's a sort of a looser freer and um, but it's, it's really not and I love the way she has put that to, the way the student has put that together for a presentation for um, submission to a third level art college so uh, so yeah very nice to see it when it starts to come into sort of go into research development or even um, go towards finished pieces and that looks very uh, like that. This is um, this is something actually I had done myself, and it is um, it's a part, it's a section of a silk scarf, and um, so that's a combination of batik and silk painting. I like the there's more of it there. I like the overlay of the dyes for the tonal variations, you know, and I like uh, there's there's lots of tricks that that you can do when you become proficient or comfortable, shall we say, in the process and in the techniques. Oh, this is a nice student notebook. This is a very typical type notebook from our students. So we get, we love to take a little bit of a scientific approach here. And what we do in that, it, it, what we mean by that is that just so that the student can remember exactly the process and prove anyway to anybody who was looking or an examiner at the end. Yeah, you know what? I know how to do this. Those top, the light blue and the light green are hand dyed charmeuse silk. Charmeuse silk, which is one of the most luxurious silks like mulberry silk. And um, so they're hand dyed. We hand dyed those. They would have started white and then the... Um, the coloured hand painted is 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 part of that scarf that I was talking about earlier on. I like to, we like to bring in that's it again. We like to bring in work that we've done ourselves to show the students, and they then um, they can they develop skills themselves that that can help with our work and vice versa as well. It's very nice to do that. This is a, a finished product of one of the scarves, and um, these are more um, um, finished scarves. Um, that student that was doing the blues and the greens did this as well. So you can have harmonious, contrasting, cool, etc. So the, they, the students learn all of that. So you can see that this is in a golden and kind of golden and taupe and brown colorway. Okay, whereas the others would have been kind of like your lavender and your green colorway. And you see on the bottom there, the student then those woolen fibers that the student wove together and she hand dyed those so in um, in keeping and using with the dyes that we had in batik. So again, it's it's really lovely. We we get very excited as tutors when we see our students achieving this. And they are roses, handmade roses, and um, having fun dyeing those. Okay, looking at white material. I love this where you get you have white or natural coloured fabric, and then you go, wow. Well, what colour are, are we going to make it now? You know. And of course, it's very easy to make handmade roses. Crackle wax motif detail drawn with copper and wood chanting. Okay, that's one uh, one of the one of the scarf I've made before, and um, it's again actually a very easy technique once you know how. But there's immersion dyeing and there's topical dyeing. Okay, so um, they're kind of fancy words for it. Just means that you can dye the whole thing in in the washing machine. In actual fact, you know, if some of you have ever done that. Um, but there are certain preparatory things that you do beforehand and then the, like masking off areas and then there's um, certain things that you do after that in process. So 
there is inter there is preliminary intermediary and then there's sort of after the fact uh, uh, things that you can do this one again a lovely student very exciting confident the students start to get really fluent and confident in what they're doing and that's good and you get lovely freshness and this is a, a shell piece again that is the crackle effect and any of you that ever just do the crackling okay liking to crackle things and I love to do that so you pour the wax on with the canting and then when it's dry you just crumple it up in the ways that you want and then you know that when that um, that's dried then and goes into the dye and um, the dye then will go into those cracks and you get that and then of course using a nice linear fabric pen over that then and we like to experiment with the overlays and underlays I love that we like to do um, and it shows a great when I say proficiency it just shows a great confidence and uh, technical ability in that's what we try to get the students to to do you know there you go so I that's the end of that um, short presentation of batik skills processes and some finished pieces um, that the students and, and a, a small little amount of work I had done myself as well, but mostly predominantly the student work uh, that students did from September to December in Liberties College. And um, it's a fantastic subject to teach. I'm very lucky to teach it and it's fantastic to work with the students. And I hope you enjoyed having a look at it. And uh, if, it, if, you, if you think that it might be something that you're interested in doing, why not check out our website and have a look at our course, the Portfolio Preparation course at Liberties College. Thank you.